We are continuing to sift through the Supreme Court's decision just announced this morning on the president's health care law. Justices voting five to four to uphold the individual mandate, which has been the focus of most of the debate. But the states also have a lot at stake here with new requirements looming on Medicaid. What does this mean for state budgets and for those on Medicaid? South Carolina Attorney General Alan Wilson served on the executive committee of the case. He was in the Supreme Court for all three days of oral arguments back in March. You have been quoted as saying this decision is catastrophic for states like South Carolina. What do you mean? Well, this is absolutely catastrophic, and it's a hollow victory to say that, you know, we won on the Medicaid uh, part of the argument. Uh, but basically what's happening is, is the court has said that uh, states cannot be held hostage with uh, old money, uh, about keeping old money but having new requirements. What's going to happen is, is that we're going to get these new requirements imposed on the states to provide coverage for new Medicaid recipients. The roles are going to swell. What are the states going to do? Refuse the new money. So we're basically, uh, we're joined at the hip with this, and the state Medicaid rules are going to swell, they're going to expand, and states are going to be stuck with the bill, and that's going to be passed on to the people of South Carolina and, and all of the other states. Uh, we're very, very concerned about this. And unfortunately, the administration got a victory today. But unfortunately for the country, it's a defeat. Uh, when the Supreme Court uh, called the mandate a tax, they basically uh, did what the legislative branch should have done. They originated a tax in the third branch of government, not the legislative branch of government. And, and that's what Justice Kennedy said in his dissent. And that's right. something that I have a great concern with. Right. The, the dissenters said that this is a judicially imposed tax, in effect, even though the president and the Congress didn't want to call it that. Let's get back to this, uh, to, to Medicaid. You're going to see Medicaid rolls swelling in South Carolina and in other states as a result of this ruling. How much is that going to cost your state? And, and does that bring tax increases of its own? Well, absolutely. And, you know, it's not just the Medicaid expansion. It's, it's the losses everywhere else in this law. What people aren't talking about, when you look at, for instance, uh, people who are in their 60s, right now, if you look at the age band uh, of what, how much a premium a 62-year-old could pay, it's not going to be more than uh, six times what a healthy 22-year-old pays. This law caps that at three times what a healthy 22-year-old pays. So you have senior citizen Americans paying three times less in premiums as to what younger Americans are paying. Who do you think is going to make up that difference? Younger Americans' premiums are going to rise, but they're not going to pay those premiums because they can now pay a lower tax. And so they're going to refuse not to get health insurance, but they're going to default to a lower tax. So they're going to pay a lower tax until they get sick, and then they're going to go and they're going to get a $6,000 a year uh, policy to cover a, a pre-existing condition that's going to cost $100,000 to get care for. So what you're basically doing is you're lowering the pool of money that we can spread around to fund people's health care. And that's going to be very uh, dangerous for young Americans. It sounds like a paperwork nightmare. Oh, it absolutely is. General Wilson from South Carolina, thanks for being with us. Thank you. We'll be right back with more coverage on Happening Now. While the Supreme Court upheld the heart of President Obama's health care law, the justices did find fault with the overhaul's expansion of Medicaid. 26 attorneys general led that initial challenge against the law, and one of them, Alan Wilson of South Carolina, joins me now. Welcome, Mr. Attorney General. Thank you. So the individual mandate upheld as a tax. The statement you put out to the press this morning, the Affordable Care Act, is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Explain further. Well, we heard for years when they were trying to debate this in the halls of Congress, and the president said it many times over, this is not a tax, absolutely not a tax. And we find out today by the Supreme Court that it, in fact, is a tax. And, you know, I actually, unfortunately, I agree with the president, this was not a tax. This is coercion through the commerce power, but the court has ruled that it was a tax. Um, I found it interesting that when I read, read the dissent, that the dissent found it remarkable that the administration and proponents of this law would find that this is not a tax for purposes of voiding the question of the Anti-Injunction Act, but it is a tax for purposes of imposing the mandate. And the dissent found that remarkable, and, and I do as well. Uh, furthermore, uh, what this decision today ultimately does, and again, I am quoting the dissent, mm -hmm. is that it takes the power from the legislative branch, the power of imposing a tax or originating a tax from the legislature, and puts it in the judicial branch. Right. Uh, they okay, so give me a sense of what this means for your state, South Carolina. So we've got the higher tax 
by the individual mandate. That's how it's ruled, of course, as we're talking about. You've also got an increased capital gains tax. So we're looking at higher taxes right. beyond those earning less or more than $200,000, which we understand from the president wasn't part of the plan at all. So what are higher taxes going to mean to the residents of your state? Well, I mean, what it's going to mean to everybody in every state is that, you know, the Medicaid rolls are going to expand because of the new requirements. Now, granted, we don't lose our old money uh, for failure to uh, abide by the new requirements, but we're going to still have them. And, and therefore, we've got to have the money somewhere, and that's going to come from the people that, that reside in our respective states. Uh, you're going to see a, a ripple effect across this country in the cost of health care going up, uh, taxes are going to go up. Everything that this administration has said since two years ago is going to ring very hollow in the next couple of months. So, uh, sir, let me interrupt so we're you. very concerned. I want to drill down on this Medicaid mm -hmm. issue because the Supreme Court ruling was actually viewed as a victory for states because the federal government cannot withhold dollars to states that won't play. But you say that's not the case. Well, it's a partial victory. I mean, it could have been worse. I mean, they could have said, you know, we're going to take away all your money uh, if you don't abide by the new requirements under the Medicaid provision. But what they're saying is, is that we're not going to take away your old money, but you're still going to have these new requirements imposed on the states. And so the states are going to have to come up with a way to fund that from somewhere. That has to get passed to the people of South Carolina. So it, while it is a partial victory, it is also a partial loss. And, uh, and I'm, I'm really concerned about that. What are your thoughts on the idea that hospitals, doctors, we've raised this with other guests this hour, have been planning and making payments and set aside, you know, setting aside dollars over the last two to three years in preparation for this? So now that you remove this veil of uncertainty, you can actually move ahead with business and investment and borrowing and, and other sort of business activities that could actually be a fuel for growth. Well, you know, what, what I've, been, I've been talking to people in the healthcare industry right now, and, and, that may, and people have been setting aside an anticipation of this actually going through, and they're going to do everything that they can in their industry to mitigate the adverse impacts. But the problem here, what you're going to have is, is you have the free markets at work. When you're basically capping what senior citizens are paying on their premiums by three times less than what they are now, those costs are going to get passed to younger, healthier Americans. And when their premiums rise, they're going to say, why should I pay $5,000 a year on a health insurance premium when I can pay a small penalty, or excuse me, a tax, mm -hmm. and avoid paying the premium? Then what happens is they do that for several years, and then they get sick, and they say, wait a second, I need to go buy an expensive health insurance policy to cover my bills. And so you have them jumping off the uh, tax back onto a premium, and that's going to cause the rates for everybody to go up. Sure. So this is going to be felt by everyone across the board. Political question for you, Mr. Attorney General. What do you think? Uh, how do you think this impacts the presidential election? Because it's, by many, viewed obviously as a victory for the president, but the tax side of it could be uh, a significant tool for Mitt Romney and the GOP. What do you think? How, how will this be played out in the election cycle? Well, I, I borrow the analogy. It's kind of like you know the dog that caught the car. You know, he catches <laughs> the car. What does he Great. do with it? You know, or maybe even uh, catching the tiger by the tail. The president, you know, built his whole premise on, on passing this law that this was not a tax on the American people. Now it is a tax. It, it was a tax. Uh, the lipstick is off the pig. It is a pig. It is a tax. And he's going to have to own that going into the November election. You're the best with the euphemisms, everyone, and the puns. <laughs> Mr. Attorney General Alan Wilson, thank you so much for your time and your analysis. Thank you. We'll check back in with you. Is this thing? I know they're going to vote to repeal it in July in the House, and a lot, lot more discussion ahead of us, I'm sure. All right. Have a good afternoon.